Hello all, I'm my, my name is Colman Johnson. I work for a city in um, Sweden, Kijuanstad, and I will present how we use QGIS and uh, the 3D cap capabilities with uh, a database and uh, how we visualize some planning projects. Uh, I don't, does it work? Next slide. Uh, just for you, you to know where we are situated, we are in the south of Sweden, uh, smaller or mid-sized in Swedish, uh, 87,000 80, inhabitants, and we are six persons working with GIS. And we have used QGIS since uh, 10 years. Uh, we have some needs uh, with um, to visualize uh, existing buildings, uh, vegetation and landscape in a 3D uh, viewer and uh, present new proposals for buildings and uh, uh, some, way, some way to model the simple buildings and volumes and also import some architect models from uh, going to be built and view it uh, in an interactive web presentation. And we did some tried some solution. We had a big, huge project with a lot of money uh, running for some years. Uh, we tried two commercial uh, solutions, but we weren't uh, really satisfied. It was um, some systems for uh, city visualization. Uh, and uh, that was not exactly what we needed. We had um, it was big systems, takes a lot of time to learn and manage, and uh, time that no one really had. And we, it was also more than we needed, and um, it were heavy applications uh, for the end users, and not that nice experience anyway. And of course, it was expensive. Uh, so we had a second thought, and um, could we do, do this in a simpler way? One good thing we had. Uh, bought a uh, model of our city in of the, all of the buildings. So we had it uh, ordered in a city GML standard format. So we could use that. So we focus on the data and what we need and the knowledge we have already in QGIS and the databases. So we came up with a simpler model, just focus on data uh, and mainly buildings then in 3D, and we had a digital elevation model, uh, and some LiDAR and other point cloud data, autophotos, land cover, and some trees in some cases. And what would, could we do with that data? Uh, and we would like to do with components we already have, uh, like the PostGIS database, uh, we have QDS, and uh, some other components that we have to still, yeah. Hmm. Uh, we ha uh, uh, some other components we bought, but uh, for a specific uh, purpose and uh, in the workflow. And we could use your, our knowledge in QGIS and the Postgres. Uh, so the heart in the system is uh, the 3D City DB and the importer and exporter. Uh, tool. It's an open source database implementation of the CTGML standard. Uh, and we use, uh, used uh, CTGML2 version uh, for that. And then we have some other components that I will not go into any further, but I will mention them. We have a building reconstruction uh, program that we can use to uh, we uh, create three, uh, CTGML buildings, and we have uh, some SketchUp and uh, plugin for SketchUp to uh, communicate with the database and data for our uh, architects. And we have some FME from Safe to uh, do some um, uh, data handling. And then I will go into the QGIS and the QGIS to 3GS plugin that we use to export the result. Uh, a little bit zoom in on the, on the system. 
but I will uh, mainly focus on the database, QGIS, and the plugin. Uh, so the data is uh, loaded to the database with the importer and exporter uh, tool that comes with the database. Uh, to view it in 3D, you have to uh, do some uh, coding or so I, 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 you have some views created in the database to the view the data in QGIS and also created some triggers and I'll show them later on. Uh, to uh, do some simple editing. You can, for example, delete the building or you can change the color. Uh, you can also create some simple uh, building from some 2D polygons and some attributes. Uh, I know there's uh, a plugin already um, available from, uh, I think it's from Delft University, uh, 3D City DB Tools. It's available now, but uh, I didn't know that when I started, so I, I've made my own views and tools. But I, I think many of these uh, functions is in the, that plugin as well. So you don't have to do it in, in my way. Uh, one simple uh, purpose is to just view the data in 3D, to get an overview and of the, of the uh, area. So you can uh, just add the uh, add, uh, data uh, and symbolize it in 3D and get export some static, static images or create a movie. I, I, I. So this, this is just an overview of the city. Uh, we have uh, the buildings that is from the 3D database. So they, it's a vector data. In 3D, uh, we have some dig digital elevation model. Kuvansta is very flat, so <laughs> you won't say, see anything of that. It's uh, almost plain. And we have uh, uh, from uh, the vegetation, from uh, uh, LIDAR scanning, and just the vegetation to uh, make the image more True. So that's a that's the purpose. We had I did a mo movie on that. You can with uh, some extra programming, uh, extra uh, do an animation in QGIS and uh, uh, export the frames and set them together to a f to a movie. I don't know. I will, I will show this in the end if I have time to. Um, the views from uh, the database, I've made some uh, ed editable with some triggers. So you can change change the color and you can delete. Uh, and this is just a small snip code snippet. It's not uh, all the one, uh, but next, next uh, slides will show how it looks like in QGIS. Uh, I've made an edit form uh, for the building and I can use a color widget to change the color of the roof in this example to red, uh, like this. I can also select the building and uh, delete it. Uh, and it's, it's gone. You know. So we can do some sim sample ed uh, editing on the existing buildings that was imported to the database. Uh, in the planning process, we will uh, we will try to visualize how the new area would look like with the new buildings. So we have to we will have to uh, find a way to uh, insert some. Uh, some simple volumes, at least. Uh, the simplest way is just to add uh, a 2D polygon layer and add some attributes for height uh, or, or an extrusion in the how high, high the buildings will be. I also add attributes for the color. 
and so then go into the uh, layer properties, the 3D view, and uh, and uh, tell how it could you in the uh, the the uh, up uppermost uh, input is uh, the height, absolute height, and then there is, is uh, the extrusion. And uh, the yellow one is that I read that from the attribute. So I, if I change the attributes on the 2D data, it will change the uh, extrusion of the building. And same thing with the color, it's also data override. So you, if you change the color in the attribute, it will change the color in the in the presentation. So next slide is how uh, it look like that. I have a 2D polygon in the 2D view to the left, and I enter some values for the height and extrusion and uh, color. And to the right is a 3D view of the same building then. So it's just blocks. But it could be nice to visualize how high, high will the buildings be uh, and how would they look like in the skyline. Uh, then there's also a possibility to, uh, to add more complex volumes and these are quite complex uh, uh, scripts in the database that do some high school math for uh, calculate the slope and height and uh, how, how the how the uh, geometries will, will be but in uh, you, you can you can do a 2d polygon digitize it with uh, four corners and then attributes for height top height maybe roof type if it's a gabled roof or it's a flat roof or, or sloping uh, and uh, the roof angle and color. And then the trigger functions in the database creates a 3D uh, as uh, in the th 3D city database. As. So you can, after you've done this, uh, you can export it as uh, city GML. And then you could have some more complex, uh, complex volume. Uh, here is a sloping roof. And even if I only can use four corners, I could combine several polygons to a more complex building. And then it's e quite easy to just copy, copy the, the building, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste to some places. So I have three, uh, five identical buildings. In the 3D view. Uh, and then can I combine, combine this with um, this more complex building with more simple, uh, simple volumes. Uh, I have the detailed uh, plan, the building plan in the, in the base as a VMS service. And then I have uh, uh, the buildings. I have the uh, volume showing the uh, where the buildings could be placed. And this is quite yellow, transparent uh, uh, volume. And uh, there's also volumes illustrating maximum building volumes. And the blue ones. And then the proposed buildings. And then you can see it. It's, it's good for visualizing that. And we can see all this, uh, some spilling out of the, where you can build. A bigger picture of that. And it's just color transparency and so on. I made some uh, more uh, advanced uh, code for, for making some dorms and uh, on the on some buildings you could could do that. It's 
with some extra. I don't, it's not perfect yet, but you can do that to create more complex buildings. Uh, then we often get models from architects uh, who have done a more realistic image or, or 3D model. Uh, we can often get the, 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 these as sketch of files or th something. Uh, and uh, we have, uh, can import them in the uh, 3D view uh, with, uh, if you transform the format to OBG or those that listed. Uh, we can also export as Collada format, as we will show them in the QS2 3GS plugin. And then you have to digitize an insert point and uh, a scaling from inches to meters. And then you have a more, this brownish building uh, is imported. You have a more complex, and you can get with um, textures as well, if, you, if we have that. Uh, so you can have bricks, uh, brick walls, and uh, other, uh, other things of textures. Uh, and the transplant is, uh, is the permitted volumes to build in. So you can see uh, some, some parts is higher than permitted. Uh, in the planning process, we, we will expose this to the inhabitants and uh, who will like to see that. And we can export the scene to an interactive web page with a QS2 uh, 3GS plugin. Uh, it's a different but a similar configuration to, the, to a 3D uh, view. There are some compatibility issues with the 3D views. You ca can't do that. You have to restart QS to, um, to, to do the export. Uh, and uh, it's good for smaller areas. Uh, simple, but good enough for the pur purpose. You can even do some animations and uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, yeah, so some... Uh, interactive uh, storytelling maps. But I have no example of that. And uh, this is uh, how the plugin works. The same area here. Uh, we have, uh, I've added some tree data with these gr green uh, cylinders. And uh, then you can export it as a, a web page. Look at the time. Just showing some examples. Uh, if I exit, can show that in. So you, you can link it from the city's web page from projects, and it's quite difficult to uh, run it without a mouse. Uh, but And it's uh, not very tricky to do if you have the data for, for the 3D buildings. Uh, I have some other examples uh, as well. Could do this one maybe. Is it? It opens. Here are more. <laughs> I've done some uh, animation as it starts to play directly. Uh, and here's more textures and uh, tree models. And uh, so it was a bit more work, work to accomplish. But all this in the green part is is the is a important model from SketchUp, and you can even 
use uh, LIDAR data to illustrate vegetation. You see the textures on some, some buildings. Yeah. Yes, and uh, I think my time is up and uh, there's, no, there's some more examples to show, but they're quite similar. So if we have some questions, we have maybe some. Thank you, Carl yeah. Magnus. Mm -hmm. So uh, are there any questions? I can bring the microphone. Hello. Um, if I understood correctly that you, uh, uh, with the uh, creation of those buildings, you mm -hmm. have a 2D polygon, and then you, with uh, triggers, you yes. use the attributes to make the real buildings. But it seems quite difficult for me to how to uh, design them because it's you have to write SQL, yes. but you cannot see it when you are writing it. So uh, that seems to me quite difficult to do. To in your head you have to this roof and you have a a small thing on it and, and then the other one. That, that how do you do that? I I, I think I, I had some uh, boring weeks. Through, uh, during the pandemic pandemic time, <laughs> so <laughs> I just sat ho home and uh, mm, one piece and in, uh, in, in uh, so so I, I think uh, as you said the code is uh, is it SQL code, so it's maybe 100, 150 rows of code to to do that and it's quite a lot for being just an SQL statement. Uh, but I, I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I did it anyway. I'm a bit weird. <laughs> I, I like to uh, manage uh, <laughs> to get uh, things doing with SPL. Good. Maybe a quick question, another one, uh, because the time has run out. Mm. No questions? Great. But Mm -hmm. You're welcome to uh, talk maybe afterwards uh, if you have more questions. Great. So, mm -hmm. an applause for mm -hmm. Karl Magnus. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. And this is a small gift from the organizers for all speakers.